Got one. Still one more. It's back, milk container. Yo, what is going on everybody? Your favorite bald paintball player here, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most realistic paintball guns ever, and that's my paintball gun. So I got this from a place called Modern Combat Sports, link to them will be in the description. Definitely check them out, they have tons of different mag-fed paintball guns and lots of different price ranges, so if you can't afford some of the higher end ones, they definitely do have a bunch of lower end ones, so you're not going to be breaking your bank if you want to buy a paintball gun. But the one I bought is quite expensive, and in my opinion, definitely worth it, because what I want in a paintball gun is fun. I want to have fun. I don't want something that shoots incredibly fast if I'm not going to have any fun using it. So that's why I bought this. The fire rate, it's about as good as every other rental you would get, you know, as fast as you can pull the trigger. I believe you can also get the optional upgrade to where it has like a hair trigger on it so that way you can shoot it a little bit faster, but I didn't have the money at the time. I really don't think I actually will upgrade it at all because I'm pretty happy with how fast it shoots now. But the fire rate isn't the reason I love it. The reason I love this thing is because it's insanely accurate. I can shoot people from really far away. I can adjust the FPS and turn this thing up so that way I'm shooting people even farther down range. It is insanely accurate, and that's the reason I bought it, because when I play Woods Ball, I wanted something accurate. I didn't want to have to worry about people running up on me. I wanted to take them out from farther than they could shoot me, and that's why I bought this one. And when I bought it, it originally came with a scope and a bipod, which were really helpful in Woods Ball, but where I'm playing at Go Full Throttle in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is an indoor place where, like, majority of your engagements are, like, in 10 to 20 feet... The scope and the bipod were, were definitely not needed, so I swapped it out for a red dot and a grip. I eventually want to take off this silencer when I play indoors and swap it out for something a lot smaller, because whenever I ran into a container or whenever I tried to go upstairs or anything, I kept banging the silencer on everything and it just kept getting in the way, and for an indoor place like this, it's definitely not needed. The only advantage that the silencer gives you is it makes your gun more accurate, so if I'm playing outside, definitely worth it, but not indoors for a place like this. Some other cool features about this thing are number one, the air tank is in the stock, so not only does it look cool, it also feels extremely natural and just feels right pressed against your shoulder. Number two, I also bought this box magazine for it. Now when you order one of these, they do give you a couple magazines, but after one play session with those, I just got extremely fed up. I was tired of reloading. Every time I start reloading, someone would come up on me and shoot me. Some of their magazines can take first strike rounds, so it's always useful to probably keep one of those magazines loaded up just in case, you know, you really want to shoot someone way out there. But if you're playing close quarters, the magazines are definitely not the way to go. So I bought this box magazine. It carries almost 200 shots. I believe it's like 170 or something like that. So reloading is off the table. I don't have to worry about it now. I have this box magazine. It's battery operated, so it's electric. So it's constantly feeding you more and more ammo. And I've never had it jam. I've never had it fail. It's, I've never had a problem with it. And I definitely would say I've almost played 20 to 30 matches with it. And I fired so much ammo through it. And it's never given me any problems whatsoever. It's quite expensive. But in my opinion, if you want a mag-fed paintball gun, definitely get one of these. I would just use the regular magazines for first strike rounds. Use this for your regular paintballs. And one of the other features that I really like about these guns are they're fully customizable. You can adjust a lot of different things on these. You can adjust so many different parts that I couldn't even name them all. And the last and final feature that I really love about this thing is when you put a magazine in, you gotta cock it back like it's a real gun, and I just think that's cool as hell. Alright, so enough fangirling over my gun, let's get into this match. So in this match, we are playing, I believe, 6v6 or 7v7. I think it's 7v7. We're playing capture the flag, we're starting in opposite corners. Yep. We have a flag, if they grab it and take it back to their base, they win, and vice versa. So I have two teammates on my right, and the rest of them on my left. Those guys on my right, they run to that corner, I run to mid. The rest of my team pretty much just stays in spawn and slowly gets picked off one by one. Now like I said in my previous video, I love controlling mid in this map, because if you can control mid, you pretty much can control almost the entire map. But unfortunately, it's very hard to do with one person. So as I take a look over here at their flag, I see one guy poke his head out. Take a couple shots at him, immediately get him out, don't gotta worry about that guy. But they still got about 6-7 people left, and I saw two of my teammates already got out. So now I'm like, shit, now it's like 5v6, now we're already outnumbered, that's not good. So I'm gonna take my time, be extra cautious around mid, in case any of those guys decide to push forward. And right now I'm really just trying to get a bearing on where my teammates are. I know where the two guys on the right were, but I have no idea who's on my left side. I have no idea if we still have teammates over there. So I take a quick look over here at their flag, I see one guy. Take a couple shots at him, nothing happens, but it's good to put pressure on him, so that way my guys over there can kind of push up a little bit. I try to head in here into the container, but I see someone's face poke out, so I take two quick shots, and I immediately run back here to my teammates. I didn't run because I'm a coward, guys, I promise you. I, I'm a man, I shaved my mustache and shit, I have a beard, but I ran because I wanted to confuse him. I didn't want him to know where I was. I wanted him to still think I was in there, so he makes a mistake. But as I get over here to my teammates, they're telling me that there's a guy on the complete opposite corner. 
and they can't really, you know, I got the most accurate gun in here. So they're trying to tell me where he's at, but apparently he's really well hidden. I tried to take a couple shots at him. Nothing happened. I don't even think I was close. He was really giving me like an inch maybe to shoot at him, and that's pretty far away. So as I come over here, I see we lose one player, and so does the enemy. The enemy is in orange, and we are in black. So right now, I believe we have four players. I have no idea how many the enemy team still has. And real quick, listen to my uh, teammate's gun. And when I say my, my gun isn't that fast of a fire rate, this is what I mean. That's his gun. His shoots so goddamn fast, and for an indoor, small place like this, it's very beneficial. So right now I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I don't know how many teammates we got left. I have no idea. I'm gonna push up towards mid. I need to, I need to, I need to understand what's happening here because I have no idea how many teammates we still have over here, how many teammates the enemy still has. I'm confused, so I'm gonna try to push towards mid, but try to be extra quiet because I don't really know if maybe the enemy has somebody in here and they're gonna hear me. So I kind of wanna, you know, dead silence this. I want to be extremely quiet as I make my way into this container. Because if there's somebody in there, they're probably going to win because my gun just is so long that they're going to see the gun before they see me. So I, luckily I get in here, I don't see anybody. I'm trying to, you know, check all the doors to make sure that there's nobody on the outside. I see a guy right here. I take a couple shots at him. Unfortunately, he noticed in time and immediately ducked away. But luckily, my friend Harry, he pushed into mid with me. So now I can be a little bit more aggressive. I don't have to worry about someone coming from behind me and shooting me. So I'm taking a look at their flag. I'm trying to figure out, you know, who's all still alive. I see a guy in there guarding their flag. Take a couple shots at him. Nothing happens. He's pretty well hidden back there. I don't think I'm going to be able to hit him unless I push up on him. And uh, for me, that's not really a good option. It's probably the worst option of the two. So right now, I think the enemy team only has like three players left. I think with this guy walking out right now, they have two maybe. So I take a couple more shots at the guy inside the container. I'm hoping maybe I can like want it and curve the bullet down. Unfortunately, you know, I'm not a movie star, so I can't do that. So I'm going to try to push up over here on the left and see maybe I can come around. But as I do that, this guy pokes his head out, scares the living shit out of me. And I'm like, all right, tactical retreat, tactical retreat, fall back, fall back. Now, this is probably the greatest shot I've ever made in my entire life. I shot through the door. Let me replay that again. I shot through the door. That is like an inch to a two inch gap that I shot the guy. I'm more than positive I hit him. He didn't call himself out, but I am so positive that I shot through the door. Here's a frame by frame. I am so positive I shot through this door and got him out, but he didn't want to admit it because he was behind the door. He's like, there's no way. I'm so sure that I got him. I legitimately threaded the needle through that and I'm going to take that W and I'm going to, I'm going to take it with pride. So that guy's not going to call himself out. He's still in there. I'm so sure that I shot him or his gun or something. So I take a couple more shots through the thing. One of those bullets goes through, but it didn't hit anything. But it still went through. That's all that matters. It still went through. So I tell my friend, hey, Harry, he's over here. Keep him pinned down. I eventually think he gets out. I don't think I saw yeah, him for the rest of the there. match. And here's where I made a really smart yet dumb decision. So I think we have four guys. I think they have two. Or we might have three. I'm not sure. I go up top on here on top of the crates. This might look good, but it's not because it is so goddamn slippery up here. You cannot... You have to you have to be so slow when you walk or you're going to fall on your ass. Cuz any sudden movements you're immediately falling and I fell right here. This guy takes a couple shots at me. Damn you. <laughs> and I just immediately fall trying to backpedal. It's so hard to stand up here because it's metal and there's nothing but paint on the ground. So I know where these two guys are. There's one in this container right here and there's one in the container that tried to shoot at me. So right now I'm just going to try to keep them pinned down and hope to God maybe one of my teammates moves up or something. There's two of them. So I'm trying to communicate with my team and everything just gets dead silent. Because right now, I think we're all trying to, like, sound toward and figure out where the enemy is. So I pop my head out. I see a guy real quick. Get him out with, you know, my insane accuracy. But I still have this guy over here in the left container to worry about. And right now, I believe it's, like, a three-on-one or a two-on-one. So I tell my teammate, hey, go grab the flag. I got him pinned down. I'll cover you. Do whatever you got to do. I'm sitting here trying to grab my footing. Impossible on top of these crates. You can't do it. It's so goddamn slippery. You don't understand. It's like I'm in Scooby-Doo. I'm sitting here running in place, not going anywhere. So I yell at my teammate to go grab the flag. I got this guy. I'm pinning this guy down. And I think my teammate actually gets him when he grabs the flag. So I think maybe our third teammate or our teammate that grabbed the flag ended up shooting him and got him out. And that was pretty much the game. So we were going to win regardless because if our guy didn't shoot him, he was going to be able to take the flag all the way back to spawn. And I shot a guy. I threaded the needle. I threaded it, guys. You don't understand. I threaded the needle. I shot through a one-inch gap. I pulled off some crazy, like, Liam Neeson type shit. And I am a god. And everyone should revere me as such. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what it's like kind of using one of these paintball guns in the complete wrong, uh, 
you know, place. It's not supposed to be used indoors in a close quarter environment. There are paintball guns on the website that are for this, but the one I bought specifically was not made for this. And I think I did pretty well for myself. But if you guys would like to see more of my paintball escapades, leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell notification. I would definitely love to do more videos like this, but I need to make sure you guys actually enjoy this. So let me know down below in the comments, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, peace.